Seventh grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit five, lesson 12, negative rates. Problem number one from seventh grade, unit four, lesson three. A, a cookie recipe uses three cups of flour to make 15 cookies. How many cookies can you make with this recipe with four cups of flour? Assume you have enough of the other ingredients. The information tells us that three cups of flour makes 15 cookies. Let's find out how many cookies can be made with just one cup of flour. Three divided by three equals one cup of flour, and 15 divided by three equals five cookies. With one cup of flour, you can make five cookies. Now we can find out how many cookies we can make with four cups. One times four equals four cups of flour, and five times four equals 20 cookies. So you can make 20 cookies with four cups of flour. B. A teacher uses 36 centimeters of tape to hang up nine student projects. At this rate, how much tape would the teacher need to hang up 10 student projects? Let's see how much tape it takes to hang one project. Nine divided by nine is one, and 36 divided by nine is four. Now we can multiply one times 10 for 10 student projects, and four times 10 which gives us 40 centimeters of tape. To hang 10 projects, the teacher's going to need 40 centimeters of tape. Problem number two from seventh grade, unit five, lesson 11. Evaluate each expression. When the answer is not a whole number, write your answer as a fraction. A, this is a negative times a negative, and we know that a negative times a negative is a positive, and four times six is 24. So negative four times negative six equals a positive 24. B, this is a negative times a negative, so we know the answer is going to be a positive. We can rewrite it as 24 over one times seven over six, and there's some cross canceling we can do. Six goes into six once, and six goes into 24 four times. Now multiply straight across. Four times seven is 28, one times one is one, 28 divided by 1 is 28. C. This is a positive divided by a negative, so we know the answer is going to be a negative. And 4 divided by 6, that's the same as 4 over 6. We can do some simplifying. 2 goes into 4 twice, and 2 goes into 6 three times. 4 divided by negative 6 equals negative 2 thirds. D, four thirds divided by negative 24. That's a positive divided by a negative, so we know the answer is going to be a negative. Now we can rewrite this part as four thirds divided by 24 over one. We can solve this by multiplying by the reciprocal of 24 over one, which is one over 24. We can do some cross canceling. Four goes into four once, and four goes into 24 six times. Now we can multiply straight across. One times one equals one, and three times six equals 18. So the answer is negative one over 18. Problem number three. Some boats were traveling up and down a river. A satellite recorded the movements of several boats. A, a motorboat traveled negative 3.4 miles per hour for 75 hundredths hours. How far did it go? negative 3.4 times 0 0.75. That equals negative 2.55. So at that speed and that length of time, the motorboat was able to travel negative 2.55 miles. B, a tugboat traveled negative 1.5 miles in 0 0.3 hours. What is its velocity? Negative 1.5 divided by 0 0.3. That equals negative five. The velocity of the tugboat was negative five miles per hour. C, what do you think that negative distances and velocities could mean in this situation? Negative distances could mean west, while positive would be east. Negative velocity could mean it was moving in the negative direction. Or negative velocity could mean the speed it is moving in the negative direction. Problem number four. 
Describe a situation where each of the following quantities might be useful. A. Negative 20 gallons per hour. That might represent water draining out of a pool. B. Negative 10 feet per minute. That might represent a scuba diver descending. C. Negative 1 tenth kilograms per second. That might represent garbage dumped from a truck. Problem number five. A submarine is only allowed to change its depth by rising towards the surface in 60 meter stages. It starts off at negative 340 meters. A. At what depth is it after one stage? The submarine starts out at negative 340 meters below the surface of the ocean, and it's allowed to go up 60 meters at a time towards the surface. After the first stage, it rises 60 meters. Negative 340 plus 60. That equals negative 280 meters. So after the first stage, the submarine is located at negative 280 meters or 280 meters below the ocean's surface. At what depth is it after two stages? So now we need to rise up another 60 meters for its second stage. Negative 280 plus 60. That equals negative 220 meters or 220 meters below the surface of the ocean. Finally, what's its location after four stages? So now we need to rise up 2 times 60, or rise up 120 meters. Negative 220 plus 120. That equals negative 100 meters, or the submarine is located 100 meters below the surface of the ocean. B. How many stages will it take to return to the surface? Well, after four stages, it's located 100 meters below the surface. So let's start there at negative 100 meters. One more stage would be negative 100 plus 60. That equals negative 40 meters. Now we have room for one more stage. Plus 60 would get us well beyond the surface. To rise to the surface, the submarine would have had to use six stages of change. We can double check. 340 divided by 60 equals 5.7. Five changes wouldn't have been enough. They would have had to have started a sixth change. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.